Welcome back. In this video, I am going to talk about the Six Nations Championship, give you my predictions for who's going to win and who's going to lose. But also, I want to share with you some of my frustrations around the tournament. Although I love the tournament, I think it's fantastic. There are a couple of key things that really frustrate me and worry me about this tournament. So let me start with my first frustration. And that frustration is the very first day of the tournament, the first Friday, the first game is France versus Ireland. Now, for me, that's such a shame because actually, ultimately, I think the winners of the tournament will come from this game and it'd be much better to see that game come later in the tournament. Essentially, the tournament could feel like it's over after the first Friday because we've got the winner of that game. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a good game, no, no doubt. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting from the point of view of both teams have uh, missing key players. You know, France have no Dupont. They have no Intermac. Ireland have got no Johnny Sexton, now retired, and, and no Mac Hansen, injured. But I think it's going to be France who fare much better without those key players. I think the, uh, the depth that France have got in both the scrum half and fly half position will make all of the difference. And on the night in that game, I can really see Ireland struggling a little bit in the scrum and also struggling out in those wide channels. So frustration is that the tournament could be over before it started. However, I would predict that France are going to win on the night. I think they're going to win by more than seven points. I think it's going to be a great game. And I think that will be the platform that France need to go on, win the tournament. And I'm even going to predict it that they're going to win the Grand Slam as well. Now, maybe you think I'm talking rubbish. Fair enough. This is just a game of opinions, isn't it? So if you disagree or if you agree, let me know. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think in terms of A, who will win that game and B, who's likely to be the, the Six Nations champions this time round. Now, let's look at my second frustration. And my second frustration is around the fact that Italy are in the tournament. Now, I'm not having a go at Italy per se, but what I am saying is I think this is Italy's 24th appearance at the Six Nations. They have finished bottom 18 times. And I think they've won the wooden spoon. It's like eight or nine times in a row. So for me, I think it's a case of let's give other nations a chance as well. I think it's great to have a six team format. I love that. I love the fact that there aren't weekends where you know, individual countries don't have fixtures. I think it's great to have the six teams, but let's maybe share it about a little bit. Let's look at introducing other lesser nations in, in Europe to have a go in the Six Nations as well. Now, I'm not saying we should just pull Italy straight out, throw them away, not at all. Um, although I'd imagine after <laughs> some of their performances in the World Cup, they might like to be pulled from the tournament as well. But what I am suggesting is whichever is the best, let's call it second, nation a second tier nation from within Europe should have a playoff with who finishes bottom of the six nations could even be a two-leg playoff but the team that wins that game then gets to go into the six nations the following year now I'm not just applying that to, to Italy either I'm actually saying whoever finished bottom should go into that situation so if that was England Scotland Wales Ireland France don't care they should all go through that same process now, it may be that I'm being a little bit harsh on Italy here as well. Uh, maybe this is the season where they will start to turn things around. I mean, there's a, there's a few things in their favour. Firstly, they've got a new coach. Kieran Crowley has uh, disappeared uh, and they've got um, a new replacement coach in there. So it'll be good to see how he gets on. And also their domestic teams are doing better than normal. Um, so... Benetton currently are sitting second in the URC, which is a pretty phenomenal uh, situation. Uh, and also Zebra, albeit they're 14th in the URC, pretty much season on season, they sit there in 16th, languishing away. So even they're doing a little better. But yeah, my second frustration is, let's just balance this up a little bit. Let's give everybody an opportunity and uh, yeah, just widen, widen the competition. By the way, if, if you're enjoying any of this uh, Ent oh, I say entertainment is probably not that entertaining. I don't know. If you're joining any of this conversation, I love talking about rugby. Always have done, always will do. You know, feel free to give us a like, give us a subscribe. It's really greatly appreciated if you do. And it really helps with the algorithms to get this messaging out to more rugby fans. Now, 
let's talk about my third and final frustration. And that, for me, is the disparity in how nations apply different policies for selecting players who can play for their country. So currently, we've got a situation where Ireland, England and France, pretty much you have to be playing in that country and in the domestic league to get into their national squads. Then if you look at the likes of um, Wales, they, they do it slightly differently. They've got a policy where you have to have at least had 25 caps before you can be considered as being part of the national team if you're playing abroad. And then the smaller nations out the, of the six, the Italys and the Scotlands, pretty much you can be playing anywhere and you're allowed to play. Now, for me, the reason this frustrates me is because it robs the fans of seeing the best players compete against the other best players. I think we all want to be here, sitting there watching the Six Nations with the best teams and the best players playing one another. And right now, I think for the likes of England and Wales in particular, by not applying that and letting anybody play anywhere and still be in the team, they're really harming their chances of having a decent Six Nations. So that's my third frustration. I think it should be just an open playing field. Anybody, no matter where they're playing, can still play for their national team. And I don't know whether that needs World Rugby to intervene there. I don't know whether you agree or disagree. Um, I, I certainly feel quite passionate about this, that it's important that England should be able to select any player, no matter where they're playing, particularly as we're suffering that that, if you like, player drain going into the uh, top 14 at the moment. There's there's quite a few players who are in the top 14 right now who I think would be in the squad if not in the team. So that's my third frustration. Having said all of that, I am still madly passionate for this tournament. I cannot wait for Friday. Cannot wait for that first game. Cannot wait for the whole three games of the first weekend. Super excited about it. And uh, let's let's live up to what I said at the beginning of the video. I'm now going to give my predictions for the Six Nations. So in sixth, for me, Italy. And I think Italy for two reasons. A, because they're coming off a really poor run of form out of that World Cup. And also the one game I think they'd really be targeting to try and win, which is Wales, is in Cardiff. And I think that's just going to make it a little bit too hard for them. I know they won in Cardiff a couple of years ago. But I just think with uh, Warren Gatland back, I really can't see a Welsh side losing to Italy in Cardiff, even though the Welsh, you know, Welsh squad is very inexperienced. But so, yeah, Italy sixth. Then Wales, I think, will be fifth. I think their only win in the tournament will come against Italy in that home match. I think they'll probably struggle in all of the other games. Um, and I think it will be interesting, actually, to see that very first weekend's fixture where Scotland are travelling to Cardiff. Scotland should win that game, but there's obviously a massive hoodoo there where they've not done that for quite some time. So, so let's see what pans out there. Then fourth place, I am seeing as being Scotland. Now, Scotland have been doing pretty well in the Six Nations over the last few years. They've kind of risen up from that sort of fighting out with Italy for final place. They've been fifth, then fourth, then third. I think they'll have a good tournament, but I just think they're going to lose against the three bigger nations. I think they're going to lose to France, lose to Ireland, and lose to England. Although, what a ding-dong match that's going to be at Murrayfield when England have to travel up there. So that's my third. Sorry, that's who I think is going to be fourth, which is Scotland. Coming third, I think, will be England. I think I'm seeing England having a good... A good uh, tournament I, I think there's going to be some really inventive exciting play from England but I think they're just going to struggle when they come up against a France or an island uh, particularly France I think they've got no chance of getting anywhere near France when it's uh, down in Lyon in the last game of the tournament but also that island game will be fascinating Ireland coming to Twickenham, I think, is is England's real test in this tournament. I think if they can stand up to that and perform well, that's going to be a real forward step. But I still see Ireland just pipping them. And then you've probably guessed my last two predictions already. I see it being Ireland in second, because I think France will beat them on that first weekend. Ugh. Why does that game have to be so early in the tournament? Wouldn't it be fantastic if that was the last weekend and both those teams had built some significant momentum going into that game? But hey, so yeah, Ireland second, France first, with a Grand Slam. I don't think they're going to miss DuPont 
He's a magnificent player, but Luke has been spectacular as well. I don't think they're going to miss Intermac particularly. Jalabert has been absolutely sublime. So yeah, Wooden Spoon Italy, winners and Grand Slam France. But hey, whatever the outcome, I hope you enjoy the tournament. I know I'm going to. I'm going to love every minute of it. Thanks for listening. And as I say, like and subscribe. It'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.